Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Paranjoy Goha Thakurta and we are going to discuss the 20th December statutory order issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs which authorizes 10 agencies of the Government of India to intercept, monitor and decrypt any information in any computer. Subsequently, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has issued what it calls a draft note seeking to amend particular provisions of the Information Technology Intermediaries Guidelines Rules, ostensibly to, and I quote, deploy technology-based automated tools or appropriate mechanisms with appropriate controls for proactively identifying or removing or disabling access to unlawful information or content. Is the Indian state now increasing its surveillance over ordinary citizens? What do these notifications and proposals to amend the rules mean for freedom of expression of every citizen, including journalists? And what does it mean in terms of the privacy of citizens. To discuss these issues, I'm very happy to have with me here Prabir Purakasto. He's the editor of News Clip. He's been very, very active in issues pertaining to freedom of information. Prabir, what do you make out of this Home Ministry order of the 20th of December, which authorizes 10 agencies, the Intelligence Bureau, Narcotics Control Bureau, Enforcement Directorate, Central Board of Direct Taxes, Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, the CBI, the Central Bureau of Investigation, the National Investigation Agency, the NIA, the Research and Analysis Wing of the Cabinet Secretariat, the Directorate of Signal Intelligence. These are areas, they, they operate in Jammu and Kashmir, the northeastern part of India, as including Assam, and the Commissioner of Police. What do you make of Commissioner this? Commissioner of Police, Delhi. Delhi, that's correct. The Commissioner of Police, Delhi, yes. Now, why now? Why suddenly when the Home Ministry itself says that these have been going on, I mean these rules, these acts have been in place for some time now? Well, you know there are different interpretations that can be put on this. One, the benign one, that anyway they had those powers because this comes from the section 69 of the IT Act. And in fact, this was also challenged in the Supreme Court as a part of the Shia single uh, challenge. These which, rules were framed in 2009. That's correct. No, we're not talking of the 2009 rules. We're talking of the Home Ministry, okay. which is really the six, Section 69 of the IT Act, under which they had certain powers. Okay. Section 69, the powers under Section 69 were also challenged in the Shia single uh, case which actually struck down provisions of the 66, section 66, which had really draconian provisions which the police were using for all kinds of things, tweets that people might have made, Facebook posts people had made, and it was finally seen to be a, a complete overreach in terms of law. The Supreme Court intervened. Section 69 had not become controversial at that time, and it, the Supreme Court sort of let it stay though there were apprehensions regarding Section 69. What does it really say? It essentially has omnibus provisions that if certain authorization has been done by what the government of India and Indian various, uh, uh, shall we say, administrative uh, bodies called the competent authority, as defined in Section 69, the very funny book of, called The Competent Authority, as you know. Okay, let, let, let me interrupt you briefly and read out to you what the Minister of Home Affairs has said. They are saying this statutory order has been issued in accordance with rules that were framed in the year 2009 and been invoked since then. He said no new powers have been conf conferred 
on any of these security agencies or law enforcing agencies. And furthermore, it says that the notification has been issued essentially so that ISPs, that's internet service providers, telecom service providers and intermediaries codify, underline, codify the existing orders. And then it goes on to say every case of interception, monitoring, decryption has to be approved by the company, company. Home Secretary now, or now, you know, the state government? Chai, what is the reason for doing it now? I think that's the important part. If this has always been there, why, what, now? why now? And I think when we see the intermediary guide, guidelines just sought to be modified, I think if you have to take both of them together. So I think it's very clear that the modification to 69 or the, shall we say, not so much the modifications, clarifications as the Ministry of Information Technology says, with 69 was also to be seen in conjunction with the intermediate guidelines, intermediary guidelines which they are modifying. Taken together, there are two broad things that I want to draw your attention to. One is none of the state governments folk figure anywhere in this. So therefore... Though they have a competent authority. They have competent authority under the Act. There are certain powers given to them as well. But the way I read it, now this has been taken over entirely by the central government and its agencies. And if you take into account all the things we are hearing about CBI, uh, somebody calling, I think, one of the uh, DIGs who have moved, who's moved the Supreme Court talking about the extortion directorate as... Uh, as uh, Calling the enforcement directorate. as extortion yes. directorate. So I think that these are really draconian powers which are inherent in the Section 69, which we did not challenge as vigorously as you perhaps should have. Now we are aware of the dangers when it is clarified in this form. So central government is now saying we have the sole authority to do quote unquote digital wiretapping if you will and we should be able digital to digital surveillance if you like digital surveillance digital wiretapping whichever way you want to phrase it and it is directed also at intermediaries like whatsapp all right okay. now no 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 this one, is one the minute key issue okay, that we, we're going up. to come back come, yeah. come back to that but let's take one or two steps for uh, backward according to the notification or, or the clarification issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs, all such instances of interception or monitoring or decryption are to be placed before a review committee headed by the Cabinet Secretary as per Rule 22 of the Information Technology Procedures and Safeguards for Interception, Monitoring and Decryption of Information Rules 2009. And it, this committee is supposed to meet at least once in two months to review cases. The second point is, according to various uh, RTI applications, right to information applications, every week, thousands and hundreds of telephones are being tapped. Correct. Now, furthermore, the government is claiming that this statutory order of the 20th of December is to ensure that any interception, monitoring or decrypting of any information through any computer resources done, done as per due process of law. This is what they're claiming. They're saying that's why it'll help. And it says that, you know, notification about these agencies uh, will prevent any unauthorized use yeah, by... Uh, okay. I want to stop you. All right. There, because I think we need to understand what the two things that have happened. As I said, one is this seems to be directed at WhatsApp and encryption as one part of it. There are two other parts of it which have not drawn attention. One is the Supreme Court has, as per the judgment on privacy, being called the Puttu Swami judgment, has already said that people have a right to privacy. It's a fundamental, and this is a fundamental right. right. Fundamental right. Okay? right correct. So now if fundamental right really come in conflict with Section 69, what happens? What is the, shall we say, the surveillance laws, you call it the surveillance laws, how do the surveillance laws square up with the right to privacy given under uh, the Putuswami judgment. And what should be the modifications done to these is an open question. And also the Sri Krishna Commission on data, data privacy, has also talked about measures required to square up all of these into the 
into our existing legislation. So that's one part of it. Second part of it, and that's an even more important issue. You see, once upon a time, all these things were drawn up at a time when they, they had to issue orders to the different agencies and ask for information to be provided to them, including pulling up conversations, metadata, access to phone conversations, and so on. No longer the case today. They have now got what we call central monitoring system, that now which it's tap into any service provider, and they can pull in any information they want. And let's face it, this is very much like the NSA and GHQ model, which is in the US. And, and what uh, is the GHQ and the NSA? General Headquarters, which is basically what the British intelligence agency is called, the like NSA, the competent authority. This is the one India. which the Edward Snowden had disclosed that the National Security Agency of the US government had actually been invading the privacy illegally. Illegally. And he also pointed out GHQ's close links with NSA. And GHQ and Indian authorities function in a very similar legal framework because we draw our laws, a lot of it from the colonial laws. Now, what, now Indian the, Telegraph Act. Yeah, the, I mean, the important okay. point is it is no longer asking for information, they are really pulling information of any amount that they want directly from the cell phone, mobile, telephone lines, whatever you call it today. And this is, a, in, this is something which is hardwired, uh, the centers, we know where they are, and they have access to all the, okay. all the telephone systems that we are talking about today, service providers. And this is now sought to be extended to all digital communications as well. Okay, let me play devil's advocate. Let me here tell you what the Ministry of Home Affairs is claiming. And they're claiming that this notification does not confer any new powers. They are claiming. They're saying adequate safeguards are already provided in the Information Technology Act of 2000 and similar provisions and safeguards and procedures already exist with the more than a century old Telegraph Act. So they've been modified time now, to time. These, they're saying the present notification, that means the, the, the recent notification, is also subject to a robust review mechanism. And it is analogous to the authorization issued under the old Telegraph Act. Now, what is it? Every individual case will continue to require prior approval of the Home Ministry of the State Government. And the Ministry of Home Affairs has not delegated its powers to any law enforcement or security. And this is what is being claimed. Though we know they gave blanket permission to hundreds, hundreds of people virtually every every day. You see, this is like the NSA. What constitutes pulling up, what constitutes permission and so on. I'm not going to get into technical details of this, but let's understand what's happening. Ministry of Home Affairs has given blanket clearances for X number of agencies by this they will give a post facto approval for anything these agencies do. It's a, real, it's a reality of what is happening today. We, we cannot prove it, but this is what we understand is hearing or what we hear from is happening. The second part of it is this pull mechanism that you pull up anything you want is subject to a review. Now, you know, if you remember the famous Maintenance of Internal Security Act reviews, which is to take place during emergency. The MISA. MISA. <laughs> there are thousands of people who are in jail, and they were all routinely reviewed. And all the reviews said, you know, the grounds are perfectly okay, and it should continue forever. So this, this kind of reviews, which takes place, is farcical, depending on the political authority. The important part is, why is it being done now? This is, I think, the crucial issue. And you believe it me. has a lot to do with the fact that the political atmosphere being what it is, we are going to see the next general elections. I think it's very clear that as April, long May. as as long as WhatsApp was under the control of the BJP's electoral machinery, they did not they did not really need this. But powers. now everybody is using. Now it. that everybody is following suit, therefore the need to harass because you see, if you criticize the BJP, they can call it anti-government and anti-national. And therefore, any criticism of the of shall we say the existing political party in power could be construed to be an anti-national activity. Therefore, subject to all the searches, 
and the harassment, even if you can't prove any of these things, okay. finally. All right. But you can harass them. Now, now, the interesting aspect, and again, I'm asking you to, like, again, go ahead a little bit. What happened is the day after the statutory order was issued by the Minister of Home Affairs, which was the 20th of December, on the 21st of December, the Minister of Electronics and Information Technology, with members of what is called the Cyber Law Division, they convened a meeting. There were representatives of Google, representatives of Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, Basically the major Amazon, Yahoo, Twitter, ShareChat, the Securities and Exchange Board of India, and the Internet Service Providers Association of India. It was supposed to be a sort of a closed-door session and a five-page set of draft rules, which are now available in the public. On the mighty, yes. mighty website. That's all, this all happened in the 21st of December. And now, the point that everybody has to understand, and this is where I'd like you to explain it. If the proposed, and, and by the way, these uh, people who were part of the meeting, they have been given time till the 7th of January to respond to these draft proposals. Now, have we, have we turned, gone back, in a sense, regressed? After the Shreya single judgment of the Supreme Court, which was in March 2015, which repealed, it struck down Section 66A of the Information Technology Act, which allowed the arrest of those who were posting offensive content online. Now you're saying, you're proposing to say you can go back to where you started from. And the earlier one, the Home Ministry's orders, you know, the, the, the you, I mean, seven months, you can be put behind bars for up to seven months. I mean, whether you do it or not is another story. So how do you see? Is it all really WhatsApp again? You see, let's put it this way. This is a lot to do with encryption. As you saw, the 69, the section 69 they were talking about in the IT Act refers to also de-encryption of computer resources. So, and if you see what the intermediary uh, section uh, that we are talking about of the IT Act, again it refers to essentially, uh, again, encryption issue. So I think there is a battle that's going to come up immediately. Facebook has to give its encryption keys to the government of India, so they should be able to pull up anything they want. But Facebook now, is, Just hold on, yeah, just hold yeah, on again. Yeah, yeah, okay. As long as it was lynching, as long as it was communal rights in Muzaffar Nagar in which Facebook, you know, was used, but much more than that, WhatsApp was used. We know it, it has been used extensively. People have been asking, what are you doing about it? There is enough information available in public domain. Why aren't you prosecuting anybody? Till that point of time, government appeared to be very, shall we say, continuing in its position of laissez-faire on this. You know, one should not interfere in any of these things. Now the elections are close. It raises an issue more than the legality of all of this. And I think all of this need to be questioned in line of the Supreme Court judgment on the, what is right to privacy. That we should not be, in, be incriminating ourselves, you know, without the due process of law. So see what is on my computer, but you have to exercise due process of law. Right. That part is not, seems to not to be there. But to me, the main important part is, why today? Okay. Why is it that suddenly it has become so important to look at all these issues which we have been raising for a considerable period of time, that social media is used, being used for all this, shall we say, violent incidents. So the government is not cracking down on those who violate public law and order, including Bulansha. And suddenly you find this. So let's say that we seem to be regressing in a in okay. possibly in a direction and it seems to be more than anything else this particular time this particular time one must the charged political there. atmosphere post uh, but, the assembly elections but, in the run up to the next general elections intent okay. of the government oh, right. is in, in question Prabir, the opposition the Indian National Congress, the Samajwadi Party, the Communist Party of India, Marxists, the Rashtriya Janta Dal, the Srinamul Congress everybody. have all been very, very critical. They are saying 
the right to privacy, fundamental right. This is all being done by stealth, by by surreptitiously, and 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 people have said this is unconstitutional. It's draconian, and and he says every citizen should be concerned. And and uh, uh, Sitaram Yechuri has said, why is every uh, Indian being treated like a criminal? And so so the whole. Opposition is predictably up in arms. Now let's hear another view. The other view is saying that the opposition is perhaps, uh, you know, uh, exaggerating the danger. That that intercepting online communication systems, monitoring uh, computer systems is not really as simple as it is sometimes made out to be. Whether it's by the National Investigative Agency, all of these. So the contrary viewpoint from the Ministry of Home Affairs is that the new notification has only streamlined the process and specified which agencies can do the interception and the monitoring. Earlier it was free for all. Now, I am quoting here an article by Deepthi Man Tiwari in the Indian Express which was published a day after Seema Chisti broke the story about the draft rules uh, 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 to change the IT Act. Yes, please. Your, your reaction. Well, I think the fact that talking about exaggerating the danger is an admission the danger exists. Okay. Okay. Opposition is exaggerating it, but it's a concession at least to say that yes, of course, such powers are dangerous. The question is that we are moving into a scenario where is wiretapping, digital wiretapping, is it to be done under only the internal jurisdiction of the Ministry of Home Affairs and the judge, jury and executioner, as it were, of these set of policies or these powers? That's really the question. And I would submit that before any of these things takes place, we have to go back to fundamentals that as technology changes, the digital platforms emerge we have to go back to fundamentals. What is the right to privacy in the digital age? And I think these, the danger of these laws being expanded in this fashion shows It's a matter us of concern. The shows but Prabhu, you are a technical expert. You have been very, very active in the free and open source software movement in India, across the globe. You hold official, you're an office bearer uh, of, of uh, free software movement. Free software movement. The contrary viewpoint is that, you know, platforms like WhatsApp have end-to-end -end encryption. So, even if the messages are intercepted at the gateway, what you might get is a garbled text. And the analogy that has been given in Deepthi Mantiwari's article, that you open like a, a Hindi text document on your laptop or your computer, but you don't have Hindi fonts. So, it comes like garbled text and he said it can... He said it's very difficult to break what is called the 256-bit encryption. It can take weeks or months, by which time the information would be of no use. Well, I think the intent of these laws are very clear that end-to-end -end encryption has to be broken by the intermediary. And that's what is really the subtext of what is being argued. And that is the, the, the source of concern and, and, and considerable apprehension and danger. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. There's basically this whole issue of being able to see proactively means essentially demanding that encryption keys must be made available because they are saying that it should be proactive. That intermediary should deploy technology based at automated tools or appropriate mechanism with appropriate controls for proactively identifying and removing or disabling public access to unlawful information or content. So that would really mean that encryption keys need to be broken, the end-to-end -end encryption needs to be broken. That's the argument which I've been saying has been the intent of both the earlier notification and this one. Okay. Now, the other complication that a lot of people talk about, the data is not kept here. The data is oh, in, they have said very clearly in that servers in the US. Wherever the servers are, that they have to be given access if they're operating the services in India. Huh. I think that position 
would lead to the position that data has to be localized. All right. No, no, so, though they said, if India says that all data is 64 bit data, then it's easier to break. But if it's not 64 bit data, it's 256, then it becomes the encryption. Okay. Now, the encryption. Now, again, when you look at, and here I'm quoting an officer quoted in this Indian Express report, an unnamed officer. It says, social media platforms with servers in the United States have been largely reluctant to share information. And after 2611, there has been good cooperation, quote unquote, India and US, the, the, our agencies. And social media information has been shared on a case to case basis. All relate, al almost all of it is related to terrorism. So, the officer is also saying, even, even if you have all these, these, these draft rules or these rules are changed, that unless these companies voluntarily agree to allow their in access to that information, it will be difficult for the India's law, law enforcing agencies to force them to provide this information because their servers are based elsewhere. So this is the big battle which took place over BlackBerry, if you remember. Yes. Chidambaram had actually asked BlackBerry to give its encryption uh, system. Uh, he was access. at that time the Home Minister. He was actually the Home Minister. And he he did, was also uh, the Finance Minister. Yeah. Yes. He did ask for access to their encryption keys because BlackBerry had a messenger system which was internal to BlackBerry. So I think we are reached, reaching a similar point where this government is also essentially asking, going to ask for two things. One is localization of data which is coming in different forms. Already notifications have been issued for all financial data. I think we're going to get that. I'm not opposed to it per se, because yes, of course, data localization is something we should encourage. But at the same time, that does not mean that the right to privacy should therefore be arbitrarily construed by the government. And that's, I think, the threat. Okay, my last question to you, and you can sort of conclude with the big messages that are coming. After the Home Ministry's notification after this proposal to amend the IT rules, IT intermediary guidelines rules, the media, say a journalists, if we say we want to protect the information that has been provided to us by a source on, co on condition of anonymity, and if we don't give this data, I consider this private data, a source of mine from a particular ministry has given me this data on condition that my source, the name of that person would not be disclosed. Can I be put behind bars for seven years? I think, and, I, I think yeah. under these laws that uh, the way I see it, that there's a distinct possibility both for you to be put under bars and if Facebook or WhatsApp, in this case owned by Facebook, doesn't give access theoretically even their co the company officials in India can be put behind bars. We know that's not going to happen. They're going to negotiate with them and see what is what can be resolved. But certainly, you can be asked to de-encrypt whatever you have received, which is on your mobile or which is on your computer. And if you are using, a lot of people use, for instance, encrypt whatever is there, the hard disk of the computer, you can be asked to de-encrypt it. Yes, that's a distinct possibility. But Praveen, I mean, what does it mean for freedom of expression and not just the citizen's right to privacy? I mean, this is George Orwell. Big Brother is is watching you, and 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 I mean, what do I say? They've all ahead all all these proposals to change the rules, these notifications. There've been no public consultations whatsoever. One bright day, you were suddenly provided these these. Uh, 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 this of a leak. By virtue of a leak of a conversation, they were having only with the intermediaries. You see, here is the issue that something which concerns every citizen becomes a discussion with only intermediaries. You know, when these law, rules and laws were being put in place, they were publicly discussed. And in fact, the intermediaries were actually lobbying with various groups. Hey, you know, for your interest, you should do this, this, this. Now we seem to be going by intermediaries to the government to know what the hell is happening. I think that's, a, uh, that's something which is really uh, ironic. Last comment I would make. This is somebody's written. This is 1984 meets a brave new world. It's Aldous Huxley and George Orwell put together. So we are in a far worse situation than either of them had anticipated. Thank you so much, Prabhid, for explaining what are obviously 
very, very complicated technical and legal issues, but nevertheless has an important bearing on the, every citizen of this country, every in, Indian citizen's fundamental right to free expression and privacy. Thank you once again. And all of us should be aware of how Big Brother is snooping on us and in the process are violating our fundamental rights to free expression and privacy. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching News Click.